Sometimes the best adventures take you off the beaten path, like discovering wild hot springs tucked away in the mountains of Idaho. This journey led me through thick forests, over rocky trails, and along the edge of the wilderness, all in the search of the perfect soak. Hi guys, it's Nancy Trekker here, back for another adventure. Today I'm taking you on a hot springs tour through the wildernesses of Idaho. But first, I want to send you on your own little adventure and hit that subscribe button in the bottom right corner of your screen. Got it? Let's go. First stop, Jerry Johnson Hot Springs. This place is legendary, natural pools right by the river, and it's just far enough off the main road to feel like you're really out here in the wild. This might be one of Idaho's best kept secrets.
Next, Weir Creek Hot Springs. The hike is half the adventure for this one. It's more secluded, and the vibe here, it's like you've stumbled upon a hidden treasure. sign said I'm halfway between the equator and the North Pole and just think in a month's time a little bit more I'm going to be south of the equator in Bolivia so change of plans again so I'm around I'm right about there <laughs> and I can not go this way because the highway here is closed due to fires uh, this 21 21 is closed due to fires. So, numerous people that I've kind of met on the trail told me I can go all the way around to an area here and I can come out and call again there and then go down, all the way down to Boise and around this way, provided there's no other fires. But 
I can't get to Crouch and Loman because that road is closed. Or Stanley. So that rules all those out. But there's still a lot down here. And there's one more up here I want to take you to. So I found my place to camp for the night. It's just kind of on the side of the road near Little Fayette Lake. Actually, I think I'm off the lake now. It's just a creek. It's the south fork of the salmon, I think. It'll be a surprise to wake up to tomorrow morning. It's actually a spot right down there. I could set up a tent, but I think I'm going to just sleep in my car. It's already 1030 at night, so I'm going to sleep in my car. This is what I woke up to this morning. This is beautiful. I'm going to go have my coffee down here. I'm going on the fly. 
as always. That's what Nancy Trekker is all about, isn't it? I switch gears got to be able to flex and change the game plan when things don't exactly go your way. You don't just quit. You don't just throw in the towel. Um, change your plan and find, find a different route. on my way out of Mountain Home where I've spent the last couple days uh, just touching base with people and getting work done and getting my Wi-Fi and so now I'm on my way to a place called Pine. You can totally see the smoke from the forest fires that's why I'm diverting I'm not going on Highway 21. This is Highway 20. Highway 21 by Stanley area has a ton of hot springs but I just wasn't able to pass there you can smell it now too. I thought I'd just stop. There's a scenic overlook right here. Man, this is gorgeous. Just a different world. There's hardly any trees. The vegetation is all low. Sagebrush, some aspen here, but hardly anything else for vegetation. The rock is unreal. I think it's like ancient volcanic stone. Johnson's Bridge Hot Springs is more of a quick stop, but the setting is gorgeous. Sometimes it's the little places that surprise you the most. Here we go.
So this is a little town of Pine. There's this bar and restaurant. And then just down the street, there is Knit's uh, store. So I'm gonna come in here to the restaurant and this is where I'm gonna work today. They do have Wi-Fi, I confirmed that. And finally, Willow Creek Hot Springs, out in the open, no trees around, just you and the Idaho landscape. This is one of those places where you can really feel the wildness. I find myself driving on a sketchy dirt road in Idaho with lots of switchbacks in search for the perfect hot spring. Now I've never seen a sign that says end of the road this way. Good morning. So I'm at the Lower Salmon River um, dock. There's a washroom here. I'm going to go down to the beach area and have some coffee. But look what I found here. I just noticed this on the... And then I thought it might be just from someone who dropped it, but look at that. It's a plum, I believe.
goodness, are you lost? <laughs> You've got a collar, but there's nothing on it. Oh dear, what's your name? Oh my, I can't have a dog. I live in my car, I live in my Jeep. Yeah, you smell good. I don't think you're really lost. Who do you belong to? You came from over there. There's nobody over there. Oh, hi. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You're so sweet. Why? Where's your mommy? I don't know who that dog belongs to. We just walked past all these tents and he's following me. Just sniffing around and marking his territory and he came from the other side of the beach so I don't think he belongs to these people. I'm gonna name him Little Salmon for now until I find his home. I was on a mission to get gas this morning, but now I'm going to find a home for this adorable dog. He's just marking everything. He thinks he's coming with me now. We're just gonna sit on the road and wait. Maybe somebody will come by for him. We went on a little adventure together before I tracked down his family, who, oddly, didn't seem too worried about him being gone. Reluctantly, I had to say goodbye. Like, I'm trying to leave him, and yeah. <laughs> I know, you're like, I kind of wanted to keep him. I, well, I knew I couldn't, because I live in this, and I'm going to Bolivia in a month. Oh, right. So right, I'm like, right. I can't keep a well, dog. I'm sure the little ones would be pretty sad. I'm sure. But his name Tell is Bonsai, bye. and I found his mom. Bye, Bonsai. That seemed weird. If that was my dog, and he had been gone as long as I think he was gone, like he, he had spent about an hour with me, and he came from the opposite direction, so who knows how long he's been missing, but I would have been really concerned and probably looking for him instead of sitting watching the river flow like she was. dropped him off he immediately he looked and then he immediately ran back to me I think it was to tell me goodbye but it did break my heart just leaving him um, I just know I can't I can't care for a dog right now it's just not in my lifestyle I mean this is where I live <laughs> and in a month's time I'm gonna be flying to Bolivia and I know my place there does not accept pets so it's just not in the cards for me, but he was a sweetheart and he stole my heart. It'll be always back in Little Salmon with Bonsai. Wow, it's unclear where it leads to. Oh yeah, there's the road on the other side. Holy. Is this ever cool? Sounded so pretty. <laughs> so on this hot springs tour, I never expected to find one that's for sale with beautiful property like that. I don't know what the asking price is of Reagan's Hot Springs, but it looks really phenomenal. I know it's out of my budget, but if any of my viewers want a project, I am just in awe of this stunning beauty of the landscape here. It is amazing, breathtaking, awesome. I hope that that means I have four miles to go though. That signpost that said mile four. Um, I'm running on empty uh, about eight, no, four miles back on the eight mile mark. My fuel light came on and I, I knew I was looking for gas ever since I was on the summit yesterday. <laughs> and I still have not come across a gas station in my travels. Found a couple hot springs, but no gas. 
and so that's one thing to be aware of when you're driving in in Idaho just be aware in the mountains there aren't a lot of fuel stations prairie girl from Manitoba here <laughs> it's just like in Mexico in the mountains the same thing there aren't a lot of fuel stations stunning views they'll fill your your tank of wonder but they won't fill your tank of gas knew it was going to be so hard to find some hot springs in Idaho here. Even with my book, Burdorf Hot Springs, opened by prior reservation online only, no drive-in access. So I'm going to try and walk in. I'm walking back to my car. There were no hot springs there. Uh-oh. I don't think I'm destined to visit that hot spring, Bergdorf. I'm going to see if I can just get a tour of it for you uh, and, uh, and then carry on. Okay, so Bergdorf Hot Springs is a little less wild, but it's got so much character. These old cabins have been here since the 1800s, and soaking in these pools feels like stepping back in time. It's like a blend of nature and history. Right, so I'm on a hot springs tour. I just passed Zim's Hot Springs for the second time because I went around the loop. That sign said I'm halfway between the equator and the North Pole. And so I gotta go in. It is a commercial spring, but let's go find out what it's all about. Zim's Hot Springs isn't quite as wild, but it's perched on the 45th parallel, a line some believe holds special healing properties. Natural mineral water is fed by an artesian well and cooled by the waters of the Little Salmon River. The Nez Perce tribe is proud to operate the hot springs and to share the significant spiritual, cultural, and medicinal values we hold for the site and valley. Welcome to Zim's Hot Springs. I'm Larry Bauer, the manager. Uh, the lodge here was built in 1958. The water's been underground for 60,000 years. Comes out at 90 gallons a minute at 154 degrees. The water is all 18% um, muscle relaxer, 9% magnesium, and 9% calcium. So it's really good for arthritis, um, aches and pains, muscles. This is owned by the Nez Pierce tribe, and they're in the process of revamping everything. 
We will be putting in an 18 pad four season RV this spring up to your left with 19 tent pads, 19 tent areas. It'll have a laundry facility and bathrooms and shower. The water temperature today? The water temperature today, like I said, is 104 in the small pool and 94 in the big pool. Sweet. There are secrets to the hot springs. Um, this hot springs actually were on the 45th parallel, and I believe a ley line lies right close to us. Do you know what a ley line is? No, tell us. Uh, you have an energetic grid to the world, and this is one of the energetic lines that go okay. high. It's why people have similar experiences of walking into Stonehenge or different other energetic grids um, as they do 15 minutes in my home. I can't wait. Also, are you familiar with Reiki? Yes. I'm a level 3 Reiki master and I've been working with the water for two years. So there's plenty of healing in there if you choose to accept the healing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Larry. So there you go. <laughs> and Larry, you've got a YouTube channel yourself. Your Our viewers yep. can find you. I haven't put out any videos in the last couple of years because the weather's been kind of different. But my channel is Fly Guy Idaho with Spaces. It's a paramotor channel and an electric unicycle channel. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Nice <laughs> to meet you, Larry. Nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs>